whatever it was, did not mean to become my best friend. It meant to hurt me. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Courtney if you're new here and it's nice to meet you. So today is a bit of a different one. It is my first ever story time. What better way to start a story time series than one of my worst experiences with the afterlife, ghosts, paranormal activities, whatever you want to call it, fake stuff for the people that don't believe in that stuff. So I have had a lot of experience with stuff like that. And this story today is one of the worst. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel to see when I do have more stories. And yeah, let's get to the video. Oh, where do you start something like this? As I said, this is gonna be a video on a very bad experience that I had with a ghost or actually quite a few ghosts in this situation. I'll take you back to where it all started. Um, one of my first jobs when I came over to England was a cleaner. I used to clean for this company. It was run by one man and we used to have to clean houses and hotels and not like the big hotels, like nice old and hotels. I don't know how to, uh, kind of luxurious. In the good old city of Bath. And if you know Bath, it has a lot of history in it. It is enchanted all on its own. So much history, the Romans, you got the hot springs. So we used to have to go to these different places and just clean. There was one place in particular that as soon as I was introduced to it, I was told I'll be working there alone. Most of the time I will be there alone. And it was a five story place. Five stories that I had to clean by myself. I can't remember the amount of rooms that were there, but it doesn't really matter in this case. I had to go up this huge, huge, huge street. Very, very steep. By the time you got to this place, I was dying. I tell you, I was dying. I was quite fit back then. I remember that I would always start down below, which was the basement, which was the kitchen, the cupboards, where they used to do laundry for the whole place, and where they used to keep like food supplies and everything. So I would always start down there and work my way up. So it was down in the basement, like I said, and I was about a couple weeks into this job and I never ever felt comfortable there. I'd always hear kind of money jangling and it just, it threw me. <laughs> I'm very in tune to stuff like that. So I always made sure that I had my earphones in just because it started to get on my nerves. It started to spook me a bit and having to work there for quite a few hours by myself and hearing this stuff was not something I was easy with at all. This one day, I was down in the basement, just started and put my earphones in, just da 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 da, getting on with it, really getting into the music, really getting on with my job. I was cleaning the sides, I was putting all the cups away and they had those pull out and push back in cupboards for the glasses. So I was done with one of these loads and I was drying to make sure there's no ring marks, no marks. I was very, very pristine when it comes to this stuff because it was a really nice place, really old, but very nice. And I think you had to pay quite a lot to stay there. So I'd be ticked off if I paid a lot of money and there was marks all over my mugs or all over my glasses. Finish this off and I pushed it back in and I started going towards the big window that had the dining room table. And it was more of like for a staff to eat, I think, because it was wooden and you had to polish and all this other nice stuff. From between the time that I left this drawer and went to the table, which is not very far, a song changed. So I can hear very, very well when this song has stopped. I heard this blinking thing just open. I turned around and I was like, Okay, so the drawer is just wide open. Okay, try not to freak myself out. Walk back over and I pushed it back in. Song still playing. Walk over and I just thought I heard a smash. And I was like, quickly turn. 
nothing smashed, but the bloody thing's open again. Did not like that. So I was like, nope, nope. Quickly, let's just run there, push it in, back. Happen again. This time, not one, not this one, two of those drawers were open. No one's in the place with me at all. I'm telling you now. There was not a cleaner. There was not a, a butler. There was no guests because it was changeover day, so no one was there. No, not even the gardener was there. I was on my own. No one was there. And there's no way from that time to that time because someone just and run. There's no way. Did not like that. Threw them back in, went to the table and thought I'd quickly do it. No, I heard again. This time it was not open. But as soon as I turned around, a freaking lady in Victorian gear is just walking right into the pantry. It's not a dress up day. It ain't costume day. I don't think anything was going on in Bath for Victorians to just walk in. Thing with this pantry as well, there's no door. You go in that pantry, you're in that pantry. The only way out is where I was stood. I go feeling very, very sick to my stomach into this pantry. As soon as I seen that no one is freaking there, no lady, no Victorian gear, no dress hugging on the side, no one's there. I felt a rush of sadness, anger, scared, and sickness in my stomach. Mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I could not believe what I saw. I was as quick as I can be to grab that hoover that I needed, quickly do the last bits that I needed in there and get out of there. So feeling sick to my stomach, I thought I needed to hurry up and get out of here. I knew this place was just not right. I went to each room and between each songs, I'd hear this money jangling again as I heard on every single shift. I don't know why. I don't know if there's something that sounds like it outside. It's just always money jangling. And it's just horrible. <laughs> each room was quite weird. It was very, very old. It's very, very cold. But I was making each bed and just each room just did not feel right. There was, again, this rush of sadness every time I worked in there and this rush of feeling quite sick and it, with every other shift, especially this one after I seen a bloody lady, I, I just didn't ever feel right. I went to each room, changed all the beds, done the cleaning. So I got up to the fifth story and there was only about two rooms in there on each side and one bathroom with this really old nice like old dip tub you know with the old faucets quite uneasy especially with like this one little door that we weren't ever to go in I guess I don't know if it just went to a chimney or something there was nothing there wasn't a room or at least I don't think so because it would have to be a really tiny room I finished this up I finished the bathroom, I finished the rooms, I got my hoover, you know, hoover in a way, in the hallway. I was like, right, I can finally leave. Well, I get to the top of the stairs, still earphones in my head, still no one in as far as I'm concerned. I'm about to take a step down the stairs. <sighs> Oh, I hate this because to this day, oh. and all of a sudden I feel two massive hands on my back, pushed with all their might, and I almost tumble. I fell two steps and grabbed onto the side. These steps are old concrete. I, pfft. the Hoover was gone, by the way. Look behind me, no one's there. No one, I felt sick even more so then, especially since I know for a fact that whatever pushed me was not alive. I was um, shaky now. <laughs> I was scared syphilis. I didn't even put the Hoover back. I just got my coat and ran. <sighs> Till this day, with everything that I've gone through with paranormal stuff, that's because of seeing a full blown lady on top of being pushed downstairs, because whatever it was, 
did not mean to become my best friend. It meant to hurt me because those stairs, mm -mm. you hit your head on those stairs. I don't, I wouldn't say you die, but you wouldn't come out of it okay at all, especially because they're quite steep. I right away called my boss. I said, I'm not going back there. I said, I'm sorry. I don't want to leave the company, but I will never work in that place again. I was very shaky. I was very petrified. I, it took a lot for me to get out what I was saying because even my boss was telling me, calm down, slow down. What are you trying to say? What happened? Are you okay? I was like, no, I'm not okay. I said, I know I'm gonna look like an idiot. I know I'm gonna sound like an idiot. I know I'm gonna sound crazy, but I do not feel comfortable there. I will never work there again. So he says to me, all right, let's meet up. Let's talk about it. So he picks me up. I get this really nervous laughter when I'm nervous or uncomfortable. And I was just like about to cry. And just all these emotions were growing through me. I couldn't, I just, I couldn't get out at first. And when I finally started saying it, I once again said to him, I know I'm gonna sound crazy. I know I'm gonna sound nuts. I know what I saw. I know what I felt. I know something's not right in that building. It's like, okay, so what is it? What exactly happened? And as I was going through what happened from start to finish, he of course had this massive grin on his face. And I, I just like, I feel stupid. He's making fun of me. I, I know I sound crazy. I know that, but I know what I seen. I know what I heard. I know what I felt. And I was shaking the entire time because I was getting angry that like, this guy was mocking me in a way, but as I finished, I, I done my little laughter thing. I was like, I know, I know, I know. I said, but I, please just don't send me back there again. He's like, no, I'm not making fun of you. It's okay. He's like, do you know what that place used to be? Said, no, I said, I know nothing about this place. I know that I don't want to be there. I know that something's not right there. I know it's very, very old. Everything in Bath is old. And he said to me, it used to be a brothel house, I'll put it in polite terms, back in Victorian times, it used to be a house where men would pay the women for services. That house had murders, it had rape, it had people kill themselves. So those emotions that I felt as soon as I went into that pantry after seeing that lady, kind of started making sense to me then. The scared was me, I think, because I was really scared. <laughs> but those other emotions, the anger, the sadness, whatever this thing was, I felt. And that that's, I know, it sounds crazy, but I know what I felt. <laughs> the money started making sense then. The fact that I heard money jingling, every single time I went there. Prostitutes get paid. Money, coins back then. That's how things were paid for, coins. Whatever it was that pushed me, I have no idea. I don't wanna know. I have not been back there since. I will never go back there. But yeah, it is something that almost, I can't say scarred me but it's something that has scared me for life. Uh, it's not the last time I've felt or seen something, or heard especially, but it is one of the worst experiences of my life when it comes to work, when it comes to the afterlife. It is the worst experience I've ever had. And I thought, I thought it was crazy for a little bit. It was nice to hear that my boss didn't think so because apparently I'm not the only one that has ever worked there that has seen or heard something. Sorry, I'm very shaky now because that's one story that has always really spooked me that I've always felt quite sick about. Let me try to compose myself now because every time I relive it, I feel sick. 
and that's that's happened like 10 years ago that is my worst worst paranormal activity or afterlife ghost experience i have so many more that i could share with you and if you would like for me to share more with you please leave a comment down below and I will make sure I do that. I know there's skeptics out there, don't get me wrong. I, I've worked with people that are skeptics, but being on shift with them, especially at the new place I'm at, yeah, they're not that skeptical anymore. <laughs> so if you did like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it, especially because I'm very nervous now. I'm very, uh. And please don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any more of these videos please let me know if you did enjoy this and if i should do more of these for you because i'd love to i'd love to share these things with you guys that's it for now and until next time have a good one